Everybody has a favorite part of the newspaper that they often read first. Some people go to the headlines right away. Other people, the funnies. But you may be one of the people that is a pretty significant minority that always reads the obituaries first. A lot of folks do that. I see by the smiling that you're familiar with this. I have a friend who jokingly calls the obituaries the Irish sports pages. Because so many people are interested in seeing what happened, who's with us, who's not. But that's not the only reason why people read the obituaries. They're very inspiring. Along with all of the stories that are hard and sad, there are so many beautiful stories where you, you don't know the person, but you wish you did. We here at St. Mary's have about 70 people a year pass from our parish over to God. And we have lots of different ways of celebrating their life. You know, a lot of folks will have a funeral mass, a full funeral, which is beautiful. Others will choose instead to have a funeral home service. Others will choose to have just a graveside service. But we always have to pick scriptures for the ceremony. And one of the scriptures that people can choose from for their loved one is the one we just heard today. But interestingly, it's used very sparingly because it's only for special people. It is for people who have been really trying. It would be awkward to read that gospel for a person who kind of just goes with the flow because the kind of person Jesus is describing here is a standout. Someone who isn't like their neighbors necessarily. Someone who rises to a higher level. A lot of us are working at life. A lot of us are doing our best. Very few of us are just giving up. But what we usually focus on in life is our resume building a good resume. And so that's important. We have to do that. We have to push ourselves to get the best grades we can. If we're the kind of student that, you know, has to work really hard for a B plus, then we need to do that. We need to challenge ourselves to leave our comfort zone, to try a sports team, even if we don't feel very athletic, or to try to learn an instrument, even if we're afraid of failure. A lot of us focus on building up that resume that we have. But All of us also have an obituary to get ready for. And that is where our focus would really need to go if we want to live this kind of life. We don't just want to have earthly success. We want to be the kind of person whose obituary would get attention when read in the paper by a stranger. One of the most common stories of life that we'll ever hear is the story of having had it hard and so therefore passing on that difficulty to the next generation. And you know how these vicious cycles go. If somebody was raised raised in an abusive household, they're more likely to abuse. If someone was raised in a household with addiction, they're more likely to be an addict. And Pope Francis says, this is what these Beatitudes are all about. This is what they're for. He said, this is the way to focus on your life. Imagine that you are a tree planted wherever you were born. And that your job is to be like a tree that takes in all the pollutants and gives back fresh air. That takes in what is not usable and gives back something positive and useful to the world. That we could be like the kind of people who filter out all the negativity. And in doing that, we cleanse the world. One way, he said, that we can see these Beatitudes is blessed are they who break the negative cycles in life. Blessed are they who give back better than they get. That's actually exactly what Jesus did. Jesus broke the cycle of violence that was perpetuated on him. 
Jesus always gave back better than he got. So when he was attacked with hate, he responded with love. When he was attacked with murder, he opened the doorway to life. He never gave back what was given to him. He did something much better. And, and think about this. Compared to the Son of God, what power does Pontius Pilate have? What power could he have? And compared to the Son of God, what does a Roman army have to do? And Jesus told them that. He said, do you realize that if I snapped my fingers, legions of angels would come down here and defend me? But he didn't. He didn't. There was no payback. There was no shocking them with his power. He broke the cycle of violence, and he responded to hate with love. He didn't give back what he got. Blessed are they who do not give back what they get. What does that look like for us today? What does it look like for someone in 2023? Blessed are they who don't get into social media battles. Blessed are they who don't take the bait when someone comments on their post in a negative way. Blessed are they who do not need to have a comeback to a backhanded compliment. Oh, you're going to wear that to dinner tonight? Uh, uh, okay. Blessed are they who don't need a comeback for that. Blessed are those who are kind, even when the people around them aren't. Blessed are they who are nice to the waitress in the bad mood at the diner. Blessed are they who don't take their cues from other people's behavior. I have a friend who said, it's taken me a long time to realize that just because I hear the bell go ding, ding, doesn't mean I have to come out swinging. Just because somebody else rings the bell doesn't mean we need to start swinging. After all, people can ring the bell whenever they want. They do it all the time. This is a perfect gospel for the 140th birthday of our school because this is what Catholic education is all about. A lot of people in our community would ask, why would someone pay tuition for education when we have good schools? And we do, in this area we have outstanding schools and you can get a very good education at our public schools. But Catholic school is not just for Catholics. And some of the proof of that is that 40% of our students are not Catholic here at our school. It's not for trying to make some kind of proselytizing point. Catholic education is like planting a tree that is meant to be planted right in the middle of society and suck out all the negativity and give back goodness the way that Jesus did. Our Catholic school students are like what we heard in the first reading, the remnant of Israel that God places in the middle of a society that's filled with drama and problems. And they are placed there to be the solution. They are a minority, but you know every tree that's planted makes a difference. Every sapling that is planted purifies the air. We are raising a generation of people who are taught to give back better than they get. As Jesus said, his favorite way of describing it was, I want you to be like yeast, that wherever you're added, everything rises. Once you're added, everything starts to rise. The reason people choose Catholic education is so that all of us one day will be worthy to have a gospel like this read about us. I think it's fair for us to admit that because we live where we do, in hometown USA, every one of our kids has a duty to be great. I mean, we have all the advantages. We have a great community with good schools and relative safety. We have all sorts of resources and supports. Every one of our kids in hometown USA has a duty to have a good resume. 
So we're talking about bringing it to the next level above that. Beyond just the resume, beyond just the college application, but the kind of nobility that has the power to make the world a better place. So this week, it's a good opportunity for us to check in with ourselves and ask, what is a cycle in my life or in my family's life that it's time for me to break? What is the cycle that I have to let go of? And Pope Francis says, when you're considering this, no one has to be Wonder Woman or Superman. You simply have to identify where is the area where you're tempted to give back whatever you get and bring it to the next level. Is it on social media? Is it in your driving? And I cringe saying it because I'm guilty of that one. Is it in some other area of our life, like the relationship we have with the most negative person in our workplace, the one who always brings us down? Where is it that we're being called to break that cycle and take a page out of Jesus' book and give back better than we get? The goal of our school is to plant saplings that are now going to prevent erosion and are going to nourish the soil and are going to take in all the pollution that society gives and give back freshness and cleanness and virtue so that they can, like all of us, work towards someday being worthy of having that gospel read about us.